In this video, we'll be learning digital painting in Photoshop. Welcome to Vetrix Home. Hey guys, welcome to Vetrix Home. In this video, we'll be learning digital painting in Photoshop using the brush tool. We have already talked about the basics of brush tool in our previous video. So without wasting time, let's get started. So this is the image I'm going to use for digital painting here. All right, so let's select the brush tool and start working on it. We'll be using the soft round brush initially. We'll keep the blending mode normal and the opacity and flow at 100%. You can decrease the flow to your liking though. Let's create a new layer and start painting them. It's always a better idea to draw separate parts on separate layers so that we can always modify one of the parts without affecting other areas. So let's start from the top of the portrait. I'll name it forehead. Let's zoom in a bit so that we can see the highlights, mid tones and shadows easily. Reduce the size of the brush and make it smaller than the area being painted. Hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and click on the area you want to take the sample from and start painting slowly and gradually taking shorter strokes so that you can easily go a couple of steps backwards whenever required. Take color samples every time you see a different shade in the portrait and paint them. And one more thing, you go to your color sampler option and make sure your sample size is either 3x3 or 5x5 smaller areas and further larger while taking color samples from larger areas. This will allow you to take average color as sample from the selected area. So the fire is done. Let's create a new layer to work on the eyes. Let's make a separate layer for its eyes. So this will be the eye, right? Repeat the sampling and painting process again. That's done. Let's paint the eyelashes on a separate layer so that it can be created and placed conveniently on the document. Let's draw the eyebrows too with the saffron brush. That's okay. Let's do the same for the left eye as well. I'll take the color samples from the other eye to make them look similar. Let's work on the nose then. Make sure the sample colors blend well together, otherwise your painting will look terrible. You can use your own judgment to pick or drop any side from the portrait. After all, it's your creation, right?
so the nose is done let's work on the cheeks Make sure not to show too much brush strokes of different colors on any area. Let's work on the chin first and then we'll work on the lips. There are a lot of shades on the chin. I guess we'll need to modify it, but let's have a look how it turns out when completed first. Work on the lips. Take care of the highlights and shadows. That's done. Let's paint here then as we did in our previous lesson. Select a brush tip that matches your requirement. I'm using round blunt streaks from wet media brushes with round blunt shape. Let's make the sample size further bigger. I'll take 51 by 51 here. That's a good reason, but let's change the shape to a round fan. That will give us a good opacity. Well, that's done. Let's get back to the soft round brush and paint the neck area on a new layer. Don't forget to reduce the sample size. Almost done then, let's get to the last part of the painting, that is the largest and will consume a huge amount of time too. I'll increase the frame rate to a much higher level here to save the time, alright.
Finally, it's done, but unfortunately there will be a lot of spaces between the strokes. Let's create a new layer right above the background layer to see those spaces. Add a new fill layer with a solid color. Let's select the black color and you can see the black color popping out between the strokes, right? You can spend a couple of more minutes and paint the spaces with a brush, but I'll show you an easy way to fill them quickly. All you need to do is duplicate your background layer and place it above the fill layer. And you can see all the spaces are hidden, right? But the background layer might look much sharper than the painting here. Let's hold the Alt or Option key on the keyboard and click on the background copy layer to hide all the other layers and go to the filter, blur and surface blur. This will add blurness to the subject while preserving the edges. Play with the values and create a blurry background that matches a painting. Here, the radius defines the amount of blurness while the threshold defines the tonal value of the image pixel to be blurred. Make sure the edges of the subject are visible. I'll go with 46 and 67. Hold the Auto Option key and click on the background copy layer again to show all the layers. And you'll see the spaces are filled with the blur version of the background, right? Let's put all the layers in a group. The cheeks, chin and the nose look a lot worse than what I actually wanted. So I'll refine the painting and show it to you. Alright. Finally, after adding up a couple of more minutes into the artwork, it's looking good. You can add more effort and make it look further better, but I'm happy with this one. So you can see, that's the before and that's the after. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and please subscribe our channel for more videos. Thank you.